Hi everybody and welcome to week one of the new UK and Ireland Meta Report. My name's Baz the Bard and I've been joined by James Ashell. How do? How we doing? Yeah, I am fired up. It is, oh God, what a weekend we've had. So, oh, um... <laughs> so good, so good. <laughs> we have, we're, so we're covering Battle Harden at Leeds. Um, the biggest battle hardened the UK has ever seen. We are covering uh, the ProQuest at Seventh Dimension in Belfast, and then we are coming back to the biggest ProQuest that the UK has ever seen, um, and we'll be going through all the results. So let's kick it off. Battle hardened leads. This is what we saw: seventeen heroes represented. Um, a good spread. I know. Um, there was there was talk about you know Fi dominating um the meta, but he only made up fourteen percent of actually all the heroes or, or yeah all the heroes that were there, out of the hundred and seventy seven players we had, seventeen heroes. So the fourteen percent was twenty five five. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think I expected to see more dash really, considering how many different dash decks were sort of being tested. Your aggro, your fatigue, your your mid range, your nitro mech. I, I half expected to see like a much bigger percentage on dash. If I'm honest, I thought it would yeah, be the, the bigger lot. But the top three that you know that the people talk about, you know, being S tier is Phi, Dash, and Islander, and they've got the bigger percentages out of them all. You know, the mm -hmm. the next ones sort of like the Oldims and the Bravos. Now, so it's kind of like following sort of like you know what everybody has been predicting and saying you know these are the these are the top heroes you should be playing yeah the trouble is with dash yeah. she's really good when she knows the meta you know she can either mm -hmm. counter it you know quite well with a build but because she's got three different builds she can do you know you, you, you don't know what players are really going to take i mean she's a versatile character but she can't take every piece of equipment no, and it's the thing, 15, your 15 card sideboard limits you to so much. I, I think that was one of the problems I had with deck building this time around was the variance that everything is there. You sort of put, start sort of bundling stuff together. You go like Fi, Dash, Briar, and maybe, and like Katsu, you go, right, aggro. I want these cards for aggro. And you sort of like try and sort of bulk them all together, even though you probably want slightly different things. But it's like, right, I want this round's on me. I need them for Fi. I probably want them for Jemai Ashwings. I probably want them for Katsu. I probably want them for, for X. But you know it's probably more favoured for Fi than it is other things. And then trying to like take Arcane Barrier, you like you know that Islander is a thing. You probably, you think Briar's still going to be a thing because that's a very strong deck still. There's been a little bit of resurgence in Kano. You're like, well, how much AB do I take? It's just been one of those where I think the cyborg's actually been quite tricky to manage this time around, just because of the diversity of heroes. Mm. And, it, and it's week one, isn't it? It's week one of basically everybody coming into the new Dynasty meta and you know trying to show what they can do. There was a lot of players there that basically hadn't played, you know, since Worlds. They were just like, mm -hmm. I took some time off because the whole schedule for 2022 was absolutely manic, manic. and it was just like I'm having yeah. some time off because I'm you know I'm just on burnout. Okay, <clears throat> so this is this is the breakdown. Uh, it's just truly brilliant how many how many um, heroes were represented. I know. I'm surprised. I mean, I was in the minority this time. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm normally in the majority. An under underrated hero now, Viserai. It's because Skeletor's gone. But um, you, it, it was streamed by Tabletop Twenty Four. Um, you you managed to jump on stream. Um, oh yeah. So you, so people can go and check out the battle hardened and and your game. Um, we we no, don't we no. don't need to spoil what happens. Uh, <laughs> no, we don't. But it's, uh, it's gut wrenching. For, yeah. It's gut wrenching for someone. We'll say that much. <laughs> okay, okay, So this is the top eight. So after all the diversity, they battled it out over eight rounds of Swiss to come up with its three Islander and five Oldham made it into the final. So the Islander players were uh, Matthew Folks, Jack Raven, and um, uh, a fella from the Polish contingent, um, Andrzej Staniszewski. And with, uh, with the Oldim uh, was Liam Holden, Maciek Janik, Fred Bird, Sean Nolden, and Francesco Giorgio. Okay, so two more uh, Polish players, Fred Bird and Maciek Janik, made it That's into... Big names there. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, uh, Machet came on a lot onto the stream. Um, I recorded Sean Nolden and Francesco Giorgio's top eight. Mm -hmm. I think um, the mainstream had folks and Matt folks and Liam Holden. I think for the first round was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. it was. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so top four. So one Islander made it through. We need to switch the thing. There we go. I say we, but me. Um, so Islander, when that is Andre Stanishevsky. Um, for Oldham, we have Liam Holden, Fred Bird, and Sean Nolden all made it into uh, the top four. Mm -hmm. uh, Liam Holden made it into the top four on uh, UK Nats. But unfortunately, it strikes again. He didn't make it into the final. And the final was between Andre Stanishevsky on Islander and Fred Bird on Oldham. So they're both basically um, uh, come from Poland. Fred Bird doesn't sound very Polish. He's not. He basically is a Brit who's basically now living in Poland. So <laughs> he's got some good players there to play test with. And they were all local. All the all five, six Polish players that came over were all local to one another. Okay. Okay. But that was won by Fred Bird with Oldham. So a very cold day indeed it was on the Saturday. I think and the Oldham match had quite a long time didn't it was it like an hour and something I, i've heard stories from like from an hour and 10 to an hour and a half but i don't know what the official time was for that old in match i don't know i just i just know that all the top four all, all the top eight was just like there's so much ice it's just going to go on forever and, yeah. and, and it certainly felt like it i mean we didn't get out we got there excuse me we got to the venue at half seven in the morning started making sure everything was set up correctly and mm -hmm. we got back to the hotel, which is literally over the road at yeah. about quarter to 11 Crazy. in the evening. It did, mm -hmm. That's not very long. It's not like a couple of hours. What are you talking about? But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's long when you're hosting and doing interviews and stuff. But... It was just like, oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean the, the venue was, the, the venue we had until half 10 and the venue oh, was okay. just like, you've got to hurry up. And it was just like, uh, guys, we haven't got long for this final. <laughs> 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 I think at the, well at one point, um, uh, the, Fred Bird had um, Andre down to one health, and basically that took over twenty minutes for um oh, for, wow. for that final uh, for that final piece of damage to actually go through. It was just like oh this should be over pretty quick, and it was like twenty minutes later. He's just like how is he still on one health? It's just like Christ. It's just yeah, it just went on forever, but. <laughs> You know, he had the um, he had the mental fortitude to pull it off, and well done for Fred. Okay, so that was the battle hardened. Off to seventh dimension. So we're going over to Belfast. Thirteen players, um, nine different heroes, um, three Fi, two Dramai, two Islander, an Azalea, a Bravo, a Briar, a Bolt, and a Dorinthia and a Kano. So um, mm -hmm. you know, Fi still representing. No Oldham. Yeah. You know, no Oldham. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah, no dash. You know when you no you know when we talk about the top three that people have been talking about, five dash yeah. Islander dash is not there. He's not um, <laughs> it's not well represented in Ireland. That's for sure. So very, very strange. Very yeah. Different. So we go to the top four. So the top four: two five, one Bravo, one Dromai. So we've got Dylan Thompson on five, Jamie McCabe on five, Adam McNichol on Bravo, and Chris McNeil on Dromai. Mm -hmm. So the final basically was a, a mirror match. So two fires going at it. Dylan Thompson and JB, Jamie McCabe um, and Dylan Thompson won that one with Fi. Um, so he had winning ways in 2022 and he's kicked off 2023 in fine fashion. So well done, Dylan. Fantastic. Uh, you've earned yourself a Pro Tour invitation. And uh, that's thanks to Ian Holland gave me all that information. So thank you very much, Ian. I know I, I jumped on the um, Irish Discord and I was like, uh, hi, can, you know, can anybody give me the information? And um, yeah, Ian was straight on it. He replied so fast. And then, um, yeah, I had, I had loads of really nice messages, you know, welcome me to the um, Discord. It was really nice. So um, thank oh, you. Lovely. Thank you so much. Okay, so. so. Big fan, mate. You'll be signing autographs soon. I, I signed one on on um on the Friday. Oh, did you? Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. I signed. It's my first one. I was setting up. Alan Alan had disappeared, 
and he actually trusted me to um you know to help set up the equipment which i was like wow this is this is um you know this is one for the books <laughs> i'm doing all yeah. right now and um a, a, a chap came up behind me and he was like excuse me i was like turn around he's like you passed the bars and i went yeah yeah yeah, that's me and he was like can you sign my card and i was like are you, are you, <laughs> are you serious and he was like yeah 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 i'm, I'm serious i was just like okay <laughs> <laughs> I was just, how, did, how, I, how did you sign it i didn't even know how, what to do i just i just put my signature on it i was just like i'm, I'm thinking that i basically need to come up with a baz the bard now but i was just yeah, like yeah, oh my I god it's never I've, that's never happened before <laughs> just, just get just get like a bat or just do a baz b-a-z something like that yeah yeah i'm gonna have to buy a sharpie and, and <laughs> <laughs> but it was the thing is, it's just like, you know, we rattle around, we do our little reports, but it's just like, you, you never expect anybody to ask. And it was just like, you know, no, it's no, just no. like a genuinely nice moment. It was just like, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, it was brilliant. So thank you. Well, it's nice, isn't it? And I, I was just saying to you before we got before we got going that quite a few of the local guys were saying that they enjoy watching this and stuff. So yeah, it's nice. It's, it's nice to to know that people enjoy what we do. Yeah, it's nice to be it's nice to be back doing it as well. But yeah, yeah in three weeks cool. since in not four weeks. So um <laughs> yeah. it's just more manic. With a uh, two week gap. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Okay, so uh that's seventh dimension in uh, Belfast. So this is the big one. ProQuest leads, 163 players. So a few a few shy of um you know the the, the day before um 163 players and again 17 heroes so um fantastic turnout there are there are a few heroes that have dropped off and um the dashies were on 20 people and you know the previous day they're down to 14 Islander picked up a couple more players um rob catton was playing Fi on in the battle hardened and then he switched to Islander on for the pro quest um so yeah, you know, people were feeling out the feeling out the room, you know, and then um and then switching decks or you know coming up with better sideboards depending, um. But yeah, there there were some fantastic games, and I, and I would say that basically, um, me and Alan over the two two days that we streamed, we pretty much covered every hero. Um, I think Levia, we didn't get a Levia on. Um, I don't know where that Le or Levia, whichever way you want to say. It. Um, I don't I know where that. that yeah, I don't know where that player finished. And the only other hero I didn't put on stream was Briar. I just I just didn't see him. They were kind of like on the third table back. And it was like, that's the highest I ever saw Briar. And it kind of like never came a moment where I was just like, all right, I grab a Briar. You know, the last yeah. game where I managed to grab a Bolton was absolutely brilliant. You know, I grabbed Callum Young. Um, mm. You know, I just see he was on sort of like around there. And I was like, you know, I haven't covered Bolton yet, you, you know. Do you fancy coming on? And he was like, yeah, all right. You know, and then he just happened to get, you know, paired against the Dory. And I was like, oh, my God. OK, you know, it's just like warriors go at it. Mm. OK, so but we really want to know what made it into the top. So the top yeah, eight. So three Islander, two Fire, one Bravo, one Dramai and one Oldham. So it mm -hmm. wasn't a cold pro quest, thank God. You know, it's just like, oh, flipping heck. As soon as it gets to the top eight, like any big event, it's just like Tumbleweed City. It's just like everyone just disappears. It's, it's, it is it's a bit bonkers that you just like, these are the top matches and everyone's just like, I've had enough. I'm going to go and, you know, get some food. And it's, you know, it is literally sort of like the, the judges and the and the event staff actually outnumber the people that are actually playing. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was long days, mate. It did feel very Oh, yeah. Long, right? I think by the time we got to like top eight, so it was like seven o'clock, half six, and it's like, oh yeah, it's, it, it is food. Yeah, there was there was only two short breaks, two half an hour breaks, one after round four, and one basically when the top cut was happening for them to do deck checks. Yeah. So you know, I, I know that Living Realms are looking at sort of like um you know how to organise it, you know the the future ones, um mm -hmm. because you know that you know how long it was, um you know was was a bit mad really because yeah. essentially the the everybody working there didn't really get a break and then you don't really get a dinner and then you got to start it again the next day so um you know it, it's it, yeah it just needs to be looked at so top eight three icelanders so that's jacob clements rob catton and um alan uh Yasinski, who's a big twitch streamer um two five peter ward and bartosz jankowski the bravo player was thomas hull um uh, you got a dromai player was scott howling mines 
um, which he had a really cool deck. He had a, a Dromaris um, deck that basically was like Prism, but with Dromai. We just had a, a just a bucket load of auras, and then he used Iris okay. of Reality to attack for four. So we streamed him to round two against Dash, and then he made it into the top eight, and he made it on stream. We streamed him uh, top eight, and then he came. Uh, you'll see him on my chat on this channel because you're watching it now, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. um, You've got his top four game. Oh, I'm uh, be curious of that. It sounds a bit of a different take. Yeah. Uh, and then you had the Oldham player, Ryan Deblin. Uh, he was the King of Swiss. And I never actually got him on stream, which was a bit of a shame. But it was kind of like I was trying to avoid as much ice as possible the next day. It was kind of like you're trying to give every other hero that you hadn't got a chance. Um, yeah. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking for Oldham. Um, you know, particularly if it had, if it had, you know, been paired with the one I picked, we'd have had him on. But he he played outstanding. You know, to get King of Swiss in a hundred and sixty three player tournament, fantastic mm -hmm. job, Ryan. You you've done really well. Um, okay, so uh, top four though. Uh, Ryan did suffer the uh, curse of Swiss though. So uh, top four, two Islanders is Jacob Clements and Rob Catton. Um, you can see Rob Catton's game versus Pete Ward on my channel should be out basically around the same time as this. Uh, the Dromai player, Scott Howley Mines, and the Fi was Bartosz Jankowski. Okay, so the final was uh, basically an Iceland. No, it wasn't. It was Jacob Clements uh, versus Bartosz Jankowski. It wasn't actually streamed. Basically, um, there was uh, s some travel arrangements that basically, um, because of the length of the tournament, it interfered with the travel arrangements to actually get home. So um, the game wasn't played out, unfortunately. There was a concession, and Bartosz uh, won that event. Okay. So congratulations to Bartosz. So two Polish players coming over and uh, taking, taking all, the, all the glory, and um, the, the UK players... You know, I've certainly learned something from them. They were absolutely fearsome opponents and they were such good sports. You know, they were so friendly. It was, it was just unreal. They're really, really nice guys. Mm -hmm. So hopefully think, we shall see them in the future. I think the, the whole weekend as a whole was like really friendly. A couple of guys who came down with like from Peterborough Way where I am was like their first events and uh, they're basically saying they couldn't like fault the player base and how friendly everyone was and how complimentary people were, were they were or apologetic if they had like a ridiculous hand or turn or things like that it was very much like oh, i'm really sorry i appreciate that i had a great hand but hope you had a wonderful game or or etc yeah from from what i experienced myself as as well as what everyone else has said it was just a, a wonderful weekend yeah, yeah but this is this is what we expect when we go to a living realms event you know you get a, you get a massive amount of players every time they put an event on it's like the biggest event for fab in the UK there's ever been. And like, you know, they're, they're you know, generally, you know, it is in really good spirits. You know, you're going to get a few games where people are a little bit upset because they didn't get the card flop or whatever. That's just natural. But generally, yeah. the atmosphere in the room is absolutely brilliant. And you're like you're walking around just smiling at people, saying hello, and everyone everyone's in it, having a good time. Yeah, um exactly. Yeah, it was it was it was really really good. Some of the um some of the lower players that didn't drop out, I think like the top the bottom eight players in the pro quest, they all got sort of like a little token, like it was they they classed it as an endurance token, you know, yeah. for sticking it out and not dropping. So it was really nice that basically um you know the bottom of the tree um got some prizes. I know that you know there's been a little bit of a you know grumble like there normally is you know about um prizes like top to bottom but it's like it's quite hard to actually do prizes for all sort of like 177 players it's, yeah. you know what I mean it's just like there was booster packs that people got as an entry which is kind of like what you would normally expect but mm -hmm. you know with these with these higher level level events you know normally sort of like you know the the pricing is a little bit top heavy that's that's what you yeah. expect that's what you know going in so mm -hmm. you know play your games have a giggle have a really good laugh and it's about building that community spirit i also think it's like a learning curve so we're still trying they're still trying to balance everything out for yeah. for everybody so everybody feels like they it's been worth it for themselves and i think i think it's just um LSS is still relatively new, I guess, in in that sense. What we three three years now, almost yeah, four, yeah. I think, something yeah. like that. 
So they're still learning, they're still figuring stuff out. And it's the same for all these like living realms and, and all the other big ones. Like the last battle hardened, everybody loved it. This battle hardened, there was a few grumbles. It's just finding that right balance and Yeah, I think if they did a prize wall, so you know, up you know, I've come I've come from an FFG background. So sort of like when you went to a tournament, every game you played, you gained like the game I played, you gained Koku. So you would gain gain sort of like tournament credit. And then with that tournament yeah. credit, there was a prize wall. And then you could just go and you go, okay, I can, you know, exchange this for whatever. I know that's very hard to do. You know, maybe LSS need to do some sort of like maybe all art cards just to go, right, you yeah. know, I can, they used to do it, but they could just go, okay, you know, you want these massive events. You want the big pro tours, You not the big pro quest. You want the big battle hardened, but, you know, just a, just a, you know, like a, a pro quest season three all art card would be quite cool or a you know or a or a you know upf card i know they do it for worlds like they've been the bar they has been the tailor for the cosplay players yeah, yeah sort of like you know the, the the tournament scene you know is is its backbone is everybody who's not really going to be getting into the top 16s the top eights the top cuts they're not going to make it but you haven't got a tournament without everybody attending yeah you know what i mean you just kind of like go yeah if, if you had some you know if you had a little takeaway you know, just something little. Yeah, the, the the coins are great, but it's only twenty four players. You know, uh, you know, uh, Living Realms topped it up to thirty two players, but it was just like, you know, just just something just to say, you know, thank you for coming. You've had a great time, and we really appreciate, you know, you guys traveling. Magic Magic used to do like participation cards for like all the big Grand Prix that used to do. So, you, for example, I guess the best way would be to look at it would be like an alternate art hero card, or, yeah. or something like that. And it wouldn't be like cold foil or anything like that. It'd just be like rainbow foil. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be special. But it, you would. You could only get it if you'd done like a battle hardened or a cooling. Mm. You couldn't have. Done, you couldn't do it like at your local armories or stuff. It'd be a specific card printed for that season, and that would. And they would just give them out that way. That's how, that's how sort of magic used to do it. And I think that wouldn't be a bad thing to look at. Is um, like certain cards for battle hardens and coolings as like an mm -hmm. alternate art to. Um, like a majestic or an alternate art to a hero, something like that. Something that's just a little bit unique. Things they could do, you know. I I looked at stuff. I mean, I did dice, you know, at the nationals for people to come on stream. I gave them a Baz the Bard nationals dice, and it was just like, there you go. There's a takeaway. You've been on nationals. You've been on stream. Thank you so much for you know agreeing to come on stream because it's never an yeah, easy yeah. thing, you know. But it's just like you know, you. I, I even thought about they could do like um like an artist proof card but instead of the real the real you know the print that was actually went through you could do like there's the artist proof version yep. of it so it's like a black and white version or just a you know like the black and white yep. artist proof that they show off on the art house that'd be quite cool just to go right okay i'm going to yep. have a you know <clears throat> flex claws but the but the you yeah. know the version that didn't get through it's just like but that's or quite cool that's yeah, but that's quite cool. It's something that you wouldn't normally yeah, get. Cool. I mean, you know, I've had a few ideas, you know, but uh, but for me, it's kind of like it, it would be if you're coming on stream. If I've recorded you, then I would give something out. It sh but it shouldn't yeah. be left to the content creators to go, you know, I really appreciate you coming and I'm going to give you a little, you know, you know, something something that I've done. You know, yeah. I'm sure the player base would love it. They're never going to say, no, nah, you're all right. That's just absolute garbage. Yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. LSS have never done it, but the, you know, what I mean, it's kind of like it's a takeaway from a big event, and you just go that adds to your collection. That you just go, I've been, I was there. Mm -hmm. That that's the thing in it. I was there. You know, especially yeah. like this weekend. You know, you just go, this mass was massive. You know, UK's never seen the the likes of that, and hopefully, it will you know, will only get better. Yeah, hopefully, it gets bigger next year, or even later this year. Who knows? Yeah. Right, that's that. That's the little thing on on uh, ProQuest card market time. So, yeah. so considering that Fi uh, won both Leeds and um, uh, in Belfast, and mm -hmm. uh, Arachne did not make it into the top eight or Ranger, um, there's a heck of a lot of cards that are literally um, Ranger or Arachne. <laughs> <laughs> indeed now could, could, could this just be um a build-up for outsiders though considering there was an outsiders announcement release maybe or it's people trying to finish collections it's you know it, it yeah. doesn't look like it's just like people you know going right okay the, these these 
Heroes One, you know, the progress because there's progress obviously going on all around the world. Yeah, yeah. The card market doesn't reflect sort of like you know that you would think Arachne has not won, you know, a mm. progress. He might have won one, but I, I wouldn't have thought he's he's winning a lot. But the thing is, like um, at, at living at the um at the Battle Harden, there was a card seller, a new card seller called Silver Palms, um, and they were they were really good guys. And and I bought a rainbow foil black tech from them and then did a case break oh, that we recorded to fill in the time. And on that case break, I pulled a black tech whisperers and I was just like, yeah, I should have waited, shouldn't I? <laughs> I, I, I've, done that. I've done that. I bought, I bought a crown of Dominion, the new one off someone for like 15, 20 quid. And then I bought a box, opened the box, but I get crown of Dominion. I was like, yeah. yeah. But but fair play to him. I I went up to him and I was just like, you know, is there any chance that I can, you know, just get a refund because, you know, this is it's a dead card to me now. I was just like, yeah, you know, and and, and you know, to be fair, you know, they they made me sweat it out for a, <laughs> for a good few hours <laughs> and then they just went, okay, we'll buy it back. And then literally, I was like, have you got a crown of dominion? Have you got a coronet's peak? And I, I just took that money and just went, I'll buy these instead because and then I yeah. I finished my my legendary collection so. You know what I mean? I was very happy with that. You know that. Um. You know, yeah. essentially, me and Mike have got everything again in in for legendaries. Nice. Not okay. fabled though. Are you still missing fabled? Yeah, we're still missing fabled. But you know, okay. they're a lot harder to get, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not got them all yet. Yeah, but the fables, not all of them are playable, so it's just like you know what okay. I mean. Whereas the legendaries, you 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 tend to use those. Yeah, I'd love some command and conquerors just for collector purposes. Like they're just so pretty. Yeah, to me, it's just a card. It's got, yeah. I'd rather play with it than it sort of like you know, make make it sit there in a in a slab or something. Yeah, I don't mind slabbing the equipment. You know, I'll use the mini snaps. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, even the even the heart of finder, I've just put in a deck and played. It's just like yeah, uh, done. I've got a heart behind me which is slabbed up. I sent it off to America <laughs> to get graded. <laughs> I just thought I'm just not bothered. <laughs> I just. <laughs> It's a bit of cardboard and it's shiny and it just goes and it gets me a health back. That's literally all I see it as. But yeah, okay, so that's card market. <clears throat> the map, the map grows, the map is back. UK and Ireland ProQuest map. Here we go. So two fires are on the board. Dylan Thompson in Belfast, Bartosz Jankowski in Leeds. Great start to the ProQuest. Um, may that get filled rather soon. And it will because uh, these are the prizing. Sorry, I jumped. Ju yeah. <laughs> so the prize is Soraya um, art sleeves, uh, awesome. the gold foil. I think the gold foil was a death dealer that Bartosz got. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, you don't really want that when you're a fire player, do you? But um, for, for um, you know, outsiders and the new Azalea and the new Riptide Ranger, um, you know, it might come in or they might be using the Sand Scale bow. Uh, 24... Yeah, I, I... I was gonna say I did see someone get mask of a pouncing lynx. I can't remember where I saw it posted, but that looked amazing. That's like, right, the, isn't it? Oh, it was lovely. It looked really pretty. Like the whole mask was golden. It, oh, it looked sweet. I was like, that's probably got to be one of the prizes. Yeah. One of the better ones. I, I bet there's a few five collectors wanting that. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. So uh twenty-four resource point metal coins. Um these are either given out to the top twenty-four or they're given out to the to the first 24 players who are actually uh, buy a ticket for the venue, um, depending on what the uh, store wants to do. Okay, but more importantly, where are we going? So uh, next week, Underworld Gaming in Dublin, Dark Sphere in London, EH Gaming in York, Excelsior Comics in Bristol, and Underworld Games in Nottingham. So loads to do on Saturday. I should be at Underworld Games recording. I need to ring them up um, to say, can I have space? Is it okay? Um, and then on the Sunday, we've got Board in the City, Southampton, Dice and Destiny in Kent, Man of Screw in Northampton, and Reroll Games in the van. So is Dylan Thompson going to do a do a double and get that one? Well, I don't know. We will Depends see. Depends how much he wants the gold foil, I guess. But busy, busy <laughs> next week for us by the looks of it. What's that, nine to cover? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine to cover next week. Yeah, yeah. I'll be at Man of Screw as well recording um yeah. so uh you can find me at both those venues um come and say hi uh i'll uh, even i'll even have a sharpie if you want me to sign a car nice uh and then week three bad moon cafe fanboy three in manchester highlander games dundee the venue in plymouth 
And then on the Sunday, Alpha Games, Suffolk, Protect Games in Stockton and Rule Zero in London. Now, the UK Nationals champion, George Roger, is basically, uh, he's going to be in London. So he's doing Dark Sphere, then he's doing Mana Screw, then he's doing Bad Moon, and then he's doing Rule Zero. Okay, so if you want to go and sell hello to the UK National Champion, George Roger, they're the venues you need to be, and um, go say hi to him, all right? Grind, grinding it out. Yeah, indeed. Everybody wants a PTI. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, anything you want to do or say um, before we go? No, I, th- I think that's it, pretty much. I wish I could attend all four, but having a kid is a... It's a it's a wonderful thing, <laughs> indeed, indeed. They just need to get a little bit older. I've got to that. I've got to yeah. that point where they 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 you know they they're a little bit older. They're little little bit more self sufficient. Um, mm. they just talk back a lot now. <laughs> nah, it's good. I, I do love it. I I've obviously showed you some pictures of the weekend of him, and he's asleep now. Unfortunately, otherwise I would have bought him on stream. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and bring him on at some point. So we've got a new addition to our our little crew, but um. Nah, it, it's good. You're not as zombified as I thought you were going to be. No, everyone sort of, sort yeah. of said that. It's like I don't look as tired. I was like, well, I've been kind of lucky. Like the missus has taken up a lot of slack for me because I sort of went back to work. So, um, she generally does like all the night feeds and stuff, so I can get asleep, so I can work and not be dead to work. So, yeah. it's been good. And she doesn't go back to work till April, so it's working out all right so far. And I'm sure it will trade off at some point, but. I did promise her a few spa days for letting me go to Leeds and then play <laughs> next week as well. So I was like, yeah, I'll sort you out some bits. Don't worry. It's all about the brownie points for sure. It is. It is. It's the way, way to life. Yeah. Righty. Everybody have a wonderful week and I have a wonderful weekend of gaming. May you get that pro tour. May you get that gold foil. Good luck mm. and enjoy.